So um, I would love to welcome back to the stage um, one of the co-directors of Storm Surfers 3D, Chris Neelius. Thanks. Thanks very much. Did you like it? Well, that scream is really good. Hey, um, before we talk about how we made the film, I'm going to give Tom Carroll a call. Yeah. You saw that he wakes up really early. It's 7 a.m. at home. So let's see where he is. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Come on, mate. Pick up. It's probably so. Come on, man. Hi, you just me. Leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon. Hello. Hey, hey, Thomas. How you doing, man? Stoked you didn't die, man, <laughs> and that you got back on the rope. There's 400 people here really happy that you did that. Good on you, mate. Give me a call. Shall I try Ross? Or <laughs> uh, Ross is even worse. Ross probably will be awake because he'll be like at a casino or something. <laughs> Come on, Ross. You don't make me look like an idiot. <laughs> I got a message for you, Ross. Okay, bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming to watch the film. I hope you uh, feel the froth. It's all about the froth. I learned the ways of the froth from Ross and Tom, and uh, we all need froth in our lives. Hopefully you guys will take some of that froth with you as well. Um, yeah, and any questions about the film? Yes, right here. Yeah, I would love you to nerd out to talk about shitting. I assume that was red and a whole bunch of GoPros that are probably at the bottom of the ocean right now. Um, if you could talk about the shooting, the challenges of that, how you faked location sound, all of that kind of stuff about the making of the film. Great, so the question is about how the challenges of shooting uh, this film, um, and because all of it was done, you were saying, not in post-production, all was done while you were shooting. So if you can talk about that. Yeah, so you guys have got an hour, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, 3D, uh, just so that for those of you that don't know, the technicalities of shooting in 3D are immense. They're very mathematical, but the basic idea behind it is that you have a left eye and a right eye, and therefore you need two lenses or two cameras to do that. So we had tiny little GoPro cameras that were this big, which were the ones that got you those really cool shots on the board and holding them and so forth. and then. We had about half a dozen different types of cameras, ones on the back of the jet ski, all the way up to the one that we put on the boat that gave us those big wide shots. Uh, I, I'd say about half of them we built ourselves. Um, we couldn't afford to use reds uh, in answer to your question, so we had to do the full on like garage budget version. Uh, and um, I just had the most incredible bunch of Young, oh, oh so, someone's calling me. Hello? Hey, sorry, Carl, I missed your call. Who's this? It's Ross.
I don't think they liked it, Ross. <laughs> Do you have a message for these crazy people? The women are so hot in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I was trying to check the surf at Bell's Beach in Victoria and it's, uh, it's not so good then I take my son to school <laughs> and teach him how to drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me about your driving, Ross. I just lost my driver's license two days ago and then a cop pulled me over again. I, got, I mean, I lost it. Twice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna have to find some alternative transport. Yeah. We're gonna have to get you a driver on the next next one. Next movie. That'd be nice. Yeah, we can't let it be Tom, be Tom though, because he'll probably crash the car. <laughs> uh, anyway, how have you guys like the movie? Did they like it? Hey, and um, awesome. and we got runner up, mate. We got the second most popular documentary at Toronto. Oh, oh really? <laughs> You're used to coming second. No, I'm going now. Whatever, Mr. Sensitive. All right. Okay, bye, Ross. Say bye. Um, sorry, I'll just quickly try and fire through a little bit more about how we made it. Um, yeah, we, we built a lot of our cameras, a couple of them we took off the shelf and modified, obviously, to shoot in the water, which is pretty intense. Um, in terms of sound, we've always prided ourselves on having microphones on the guys so that you can hear what's happening in there, like so many sports or surf documentaries, you're just so separated from the character that's on the wave. And that's fine for the first two waves, but then you get bored after that. It just becomes pretty pictures. So it's all about trying to get you guys in as close into the experience as possible so that, um, you know, it's more dramatic and more fun. Yep. Yes, sorry, who was the question? Yeah, about way up there, is that the one you saw? Yeah, great, no, no worries. Hi, great movie. Tell me, how are your surfing skills? And then how fast are the surfers moving ahead of the waves? Because it appeared to be very fast. Great, so question one was about your surfing skills. Question two is uh, the speed at which they're traveling in front of the wave. Yeah, um, I don't know what to say about my surfing. I, I, you know, head high, I'm pretty comfortable in that type of surf but go any bigger than that and it's all just becomes fantasy. I'm pretty sure that wave on the south coast, I was looking at it thinking, oh, I could do that, but I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, you know, those guys make it look easy um, because they've been doing it since they were this big. Actually, they are still this big. <laughs> They're really short. I call them the hobbits. In terms of how fast they go, uh, we've actually, clocked it, we put GPS devices on them before, and they do around, let me get this right, around sort of 50 to 60 kilometers an hour quite often, um, which is fast when you consider that they're just standing on a five foot board and there's a 20 foot monster chasing them. Um, it can't, it, I know it looks like sometimes that shot from the board camera, it looks like it's sped up but it's not, it's, that's actually real time. A lot of the other stuff is slow motion, but that, that camera, when you see the image kind of jittering a little, that's because the camera can't keep up. They're just like, uh, and they love it. They just love it, they're like, ah, and that's what they live for. <laughs> like, go figure. <laughs> Uh, this is clearly a very expensive sport. If you go looking for the occasional way that hasn't been done before, where do you, where does your expectations of income 
<laughs> so for the uh, the surfers, how do they how do they uh, make income? Because it seems like quite an, a costly sport. Prostitution. <laughs> uh, no, um, Ross and Tom are sponsored athletes. That's the way it works in surfing, and they have been since they were, you know, 20 years old. So Ross is sponsored by Red Bull and Quicksilver, and Tom is, you know, apart from Kelly Slater, Tom is Quicksilver in terms of uh, the face. So even at their age now, they're kind of sort of like coming into this place now where they're almost like ambassadors for those brands as well. So they get income that way. We didn't get any money from that. Um, having said that though, um, certainly the film enables them and us to do an adventure, like say like Turtle Dove at the end. Like Ross and Tom are always doing this stuff no matter what. And it's really fun to hear them ringing each other. Oh, what are you doing? you know, fear of missing out. And th if there's a 20 foot swell, they're there. But certainly in the case of last year, you know, we were enabled to do more because we were using, we were making a film, yeah. And I think we have time for one more. Yes, sir. How did you guys raise the bar from what they just did out, you know, past perfect? So how do they raise the bar? How do they keep raising the bar? <laughs> Particularly Ross. Yeah, well, Ross will never be satisfied. And I think he's resigned himself to that fact. Um, certainly, you know, as a team, we've been together for maybe six years and we've got our eyes on other places. Um, there's a place off California called Cortez Bank, which purportedly produced the biggest wave ever surfed. There's an island, and I, I don't even want to bring it up because I really don't want to go there, but I know they do called Heard Island, which is equidistant between the South Pole, Perth, and South Africa. Oh so you need an icebreaker to get there. Ben Matson's already getting the people together to do it. I'm hoping it doesn't happen so I don't have to go. <laughs> but that, that's a volcanic island in the middle of the Southern Ocean that will, does get the biggest swells in the world. Most definitely, but it, God, it's so far away. Um, so I think to, for them it's just adventure, it's always just trying to find places that they haven't surfed before because they've done it all, they're so old <laughs> and uh, you know they don't need to surf that same break again and as you can tell in the film they like their version of surfing has nothing to do with uh, you know suntans and sand and board shorts and palm trees, it's as you saw, it's like five mil wetsuits and, you know, we've, we've done stuff in New Zealand where it was snowing. So, um, they just don't care, they just want to go. Amazing. Thank you so much, Chris for your film. Congratulations. Thank you all for sticking around. Have a great rest of your festival.